questions. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Urban, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, sir. Uh, Chairman Brown, Ranking Member Scott, and distinguished members of this committee, thank you for the opportunity to address you on additional measures needed to combat the massive threat of fentanyl and other narcotics trafficking. This drug poses an enormous threat to our homeland. It has murdered hundreds of thousands of Americans, destabilized Mexico, destroyed communities, and harmed the integrity of our financial institutions. Significant new tools, including those in the Fend Off Fentanyl Act, known as the Fend Act, are needed to address it. I witnessed the damage done by organized crime and drug trafficking firsthand during my 24-year career with the DEA. We targeted leadership of transnational criminal organizations that were trafficking drugs into the U.S. and laundering crime proceeds through U.S. financial institutions. In 2018, I was assigned to DEA's Special Operations Division, known as SOD, where I formed a team that was focused on a new and evolving threat, Chinese money laundering organizations, known as CMLOs. We took this step because we were receiving reports from the field that Mexican drug cartels were using Chinese money laundering networks in increasing amounts to launder their cash. Agents in the field reported that Chinese money launderers guaranteed immediate payment to the traffickers in their home countries at a cost of only 1 to 2 percent. That was previously unheard of. This new Chinese money laundering model was a dramatic improvement for the Mexican cartels because they achieved greater profits more quickly with less risk than more traditional forms of money laundering, such as the black market peso exchange and bulk cash smuggling. Here is how the scheme works. Every day in the United States, the proceeds from the sales of fentanyl and other dangerous drugs are generated in the form of bulk cash, U.S. cash. Those proceeds in this example are delivered to a Chinese money laundering broker in the U.S. so they can be laundered. Once that bulk cash is received by that, money, by that broker, the funds are advanced to the Mexican cartels in Mexico. They are made whole at that point. The Chinese money laundering organization then sells those US dollars to Chinese customers who want to spend money in the United States. This money can be used to fund investments, acquire real estate, cars, pays college tuition, and just purchase <laughs> chips at a casino, among other things. These Chinese customers pay a broker in China for the cash they purchase within the United States. Funds received by brokers from customers in China are used to buy goods for export to Mexico or another country where transnational criminal organizations operate. Once those goods arrive in Mexico, they are again another country used by transnational organized crime. They are sold and the proceeds are delivered to another Chinese money laundering broker, and in this example, Mexico, and it returns the money to the funds they had already advanced to the Mexican cartel. The Chinese money launders make money at every stage of this transaction, accomplish all this quickly and efficiently. I refer the committee to my written submission, which contains a simplified graphic depicting this scheme. What makes this scheme so effective and hard to detect? First, it minimizes the movement of funds. Dollars don't leave the US, pesos don't leave Mexico, and the RMB does not leave China. Second, it takes advantage of the huge and increasing volume of trade with China and the existence of capital flight controls within China. Third, it uses technology to its advantage, transacting primarily via WeChat, which is an encrypted network that is resistant to surveillance by US law enforcement and that facilitates speed and trust within the Chinese money laundering network. Again, a very important component to this. Fourth, it exploits the fact that financial institutions and other domestic recipients of Chinese origin funds are unfamiliar with Chinese money laundering networks. That said, the scheme has several potential vulnerabilities that are not being fully exploited, but could be with the aid of the FEND Act and other changes. Unlike some traditional money laundering schemes, proceeds never leave the US and can be frozen or seized. Financial institutions, transnational criminal organizations, and Chinese money laundering organizations maintain detailed transaction data that can be exploited by law enforcement with the aid of targeting analysts and data scientists. At my current employer, Nardello & Co., I'm helping the business community understand and combat the threat posed by the cartels and their enablers. But more federal guidance, more sanctions, more enforcement activity, and more resources are needed. The FEND Act addresses each of these needs. 
Thank you for your time and consideration. I look forward to answering your questions and any future discussions with the committee and its staff about this very important issue. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Urban. I'll begin with Mr. D.